and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Here we teach tutorials and other creative videos and share inspiration. Today's tutorial features the Carlton pattern. There are three sizes included in the pattern so you can choose the size that works best for your travels or even make a complete set of three. Staying organized while traveling and at home has never been easier. The exterior mesh flap makes it easy to view what's inside and also makes the bag breathable. The handle can be hung on a hook or a doorknob for convenient access to toiletries or grooming accessories. The name and design was inspired by the historic Carlton Keynes Hotel in France featured in the 1956 film To Catch a Thief. This project is really great for featuring prints and it sews together quickly which makes it a really fun project to make. So before we begin the tutorial, be sure to purchase the pattern. You can find the pattern and all the supplies to make this project on our website, sallytomato.com, or you can request them at your local quilt shop. Please shop local as often as you can. The supplies you need are listed on the back of the pattern, including a list of helpful notions. So gather your supplies and cut out the size bag that you'd like to make. Remember that you can pause the video as the steps progress, so that way you can sew at your own pace and sew right along with me. So if you're ready, let's begin. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover and the pattern corrections page on our website for any updates. Also, it may be helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. There are also cutting layouts included in the pattern for each size of Carlton bag. You'll need a main fabric for the gusset, side panel, bottom panel, and your bias binding. You'll also need a lining fabric, some foam stabilizer. You'll need a piece of mesh, and this will be used for the top panel. I definitely recommend checking out our brand new innovative air mesh. This is a mesh that has a foam layer in between. It's breathable, lightweight, and has lots of heavy duty support, which is great for this pattern. Otherwise, you could check out our traditional mesh or another brand of mesh as well. You'll also need a piece of webbing, which will be used for the handle and a zipper. I'm using Sally Tomato Zippers by The Yard. They have a nylon coil with a metallic finish, so they look like metal, but they're actually not. So you can cut and sew directly through these zippers, and the coils come in different colors so you can coordinate with your fabrics. We have lots of tutorials on using Zipper by the Yard on our website. They're super nice and durable for making bags. Remember to check out the back of the pattern cover for a list of helpful notions, and let's begin. The first section in the instructions is to prepare the fabrics. If you're making the small or medium size, you're ready to get started. However, if you're making the large size, you'll need to join your pieces B, which are the side panel, according to the pattern. So reference the pattern on instructions for how to make one continuous piece. Next, for whichever size you're making, you'll position the wrong side of each main fabric piece over each coordinating foam piece and align all the edges. You can set the bias binding aside. You won't need foam for that. You can use basting spray or sewing clips to hold the layers together. For this project, I'm going to be using a very narrow foot attached to my Baby Lock Accomplish machine. I love this machine because it has the narrow foot, which is great for top stitching and installing zippers. I'm going to use this foot for the entire project. However, for this step, you may want to use a walking foot to help prevent your fabric from shifting. So at the machine, you're going to baste an eighth inch from all edges of each piece that has the foam attached to it. So this will be pieces A, B, and C. Next, you'll position the wrong side of lining piece C against the attached foam piece C, which is opposite of the main fabric. Then baste an eighth inch from the edges. Next, position the circle template included in the pattern in each corner of piece C and trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge. I'm using an ink pen so that way you can see the marked line and also this edge will be sewn into the seam allowance 
so it won't matter if it's a removable pen or not. Then you'll cut along each marked line to round the corners. You'll repeat the same steps to round each corner of mesh piece E. Next, we'll assemble the gusset. Take your zipper and slide both of the poles to one end so the zipper is closed. If you'd like, you can top stitch over each raw end of the zipper tape with a few stitches forward and back to help prevent the poles from accidentally sliding off. Then with right sides together, you're going to position the zipper along the long edge of main fabric piece B side panel and let the zipper poles and ends of the zipper extend beyond the sides. Then with right sides together, layer the lining piece B side panel over the main fabric piece B and against the wrong side of the zipper. Add some sewing clips to hold the layers together. Sew together along the long edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold the side panels away from the zipper so they are wrong sides together. You can press with your iron or a seam roller. You'll want to make sure that the bottom raw edges are even and also the side edges are even. Use some sewing clips to hold the layers together. Then top stitch an eighth inch from the seam and remaining edges of side panels. After sewing, move the poles to the center and trim off the excess zipper tape so it's even with the edges of the side panels. Make sure that the height of the prepared side panel measures the same as piece A gusset and trim along the bottom edge of each piece to adjust the height if necessary. Depending on the size zipper that you used and variations in seam allowance that can happen, sometimes the height might be a little bit different, so now is the time to double check. Then with right sides together, align one short edge of main fabric piece A with one short edge of main fabric piece B. And repeat with the lining pieces so the linings are right sides together. Sew the pieces together with a quarter inch seam allowance. After sewing, fold the gusset pieces away from the zipper so they are wrong sides together and you can give it a good press over at your iron. Then you'll top stitch an eighth inch from the seam. Then you'll repeat the same steps to attach the opposite edge of the gusset pieces to the opposite edge of the side panel. So you'll start by matching the main fabrics right sides together and then I like to roll the side panel nice and tight and then with right sides together you'll match up the lining pieces. Add some sewing clips to hold together and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. After sewing, you can unroll the piece so it is right side out and do your top stitching. Then fold the assembled gusset in half matching the gusset seams to mark the top and bottom center on the front and back. The next step is to attach the handle. Against the main fabric, position the inner edges of the webbing piece F handle away from the center of piece A, opposite of the zipper according to the pattern. Use some sewing clips to hold in place. Then top stitch an eighth inch from handle ends. Next we'll prepare the bias binding. Take your main fabric piece D binding and you'll cut it in half diagonally so you have two triangles. Then you'll put right sides together and position the two triangles so the 90 degree corners are opposite of each other. And you'll sew along one short side with a quarter inch seam allowance. After stitching, you'll press the seam open. Then you'll cut strips along the bias edge, which is the long edge of the triangle, according to the pattern. Join each of the strips by placing the ends right sides together perpendicular to each other. Sew along the angled edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. 
Then you'll press each seam open and continue to make one long strip. Next, take whichever end you want to be the starting end of your binding and position it how I have it. And on the left side edge of the end, the angled edge should have a 45 degree angle from the top edge towards the right hand side. So trim that end if needed so the angle is in the correct direction. Then you'll press the angled edge of the binding a half inch to the wrong side and trim the excess fabric even with the side. Then with wrong sides together, fold the binding strip in half lengthwise and press along the entire length of the binding strip. After pressing, you can set aside the binding strip for the moment. Now we're ready to assemble the bag. Fold piece C and E in half, matching the short side edges to mark the top and bottom center. Set piece E aside, and with lining fabrics together, match the back center mark on the gusset with the center mark on piece C. Clip together the center marks, then align the straight edges and ease in the curved edges of the side panel to align the raw edges and clip the layers together. Sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. You can try using a stiletto or the Sally Tomato Essential Turning and Creasing Tool to help guide the fabric around the curves and make sure to stop with your needle down to readjust as needed along the curves. Use lots of pins or sewing clips to help prevent your fabric from shifting or puckering. Next we're ready to add the binding. With main fabrics together, place the angled end of the binding against piece A, aligning the raw edges around the entire gusset. You can use sewing clips or pins to hold the layers together, but I am just going to add a few clips at the beginning and position it as I sew. Begin about two to three inches from the pointed end of the binding with a quarter inch seam allowance. A zipper foot or narrow foot will help you maintain your seam allowance around the curves. Also be conscious of your zipper pulls and make sure that they stay out of the way. Stop sewing about two inches from the pointed end and trim the tail end of the binding so that it overlaps the angled end and is just before the starting point of the stitching. After trimming, tuck the tail end of the binding into the angled beginning and you can add some pins to hold in place and resume stitching the remainder of the seam. Make sure to backstitch at the end. Fold and press the binding to the opposite side covering the raw edge and clip in place. Then you'll top stitch the binding in the ditch of the seam with piece C against the bed of the sewing machine. If you're worried about not catching the opposite side of the binding, you can top stitch with the gusset against the bed of the sewing machine an eighth inch from the single folded edge of the binding. Next, with the mesh piece E on the table, match the front center marks on the gusset with the center marks on piece E. Add some sewing clips to hold together. Then sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And it's easiest to sew this step with the mesh against the bed of the sewing machine. Then you'll repeat the same process to attach the remaining length of binding to the front raw edges of the mesh and the gusset. You will have to angle and press one end of the binding just like before.
Thank you for watching this tutorial and perhaps even sewing along with me. I hope you're excited to use your new bag. And if you have any further questions, feel free to comment below and we'll be sure to answer them. We encourage you to share photos of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Carlton Pattern on social media. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll check out the rest of our pattern line for more professional looking projects. See you next time.